We're here with a gentleman who was riding his UTV up along this ridge line, and unfortunately they rolled off the top and the Razor rolled 1,200 feet. The gal that was buckled up, was too far of a fall for her, and she passed away when she hit the bottom. She was just laying there. Yeah. And I was just in so much shock, I just grabbed her hand and she was already passed away when I got there. Yeah. We're ready for you to pull. Ladies and gentlemen, I have got a real sweet surprise for you. And you see the smile on my face? This is genuine. You know when it's real, and you know when it's not because I'm not good at faking it. So, without further ado, boom. Look at this guy. A Ram 3500 Wrecker. Four wheel drive, Cummins, five speed manual. This thing is just an absolute gem. Belongs to our buddy, Brian, over Atlas Towing in Garden City. And um, today we're taking the old, uh, Ram 350 on a test drive, and we actually have a very important recovery today. Um, today's a little bit bittersweet, actually. So what we're doing is we're headed to the top of this mountain right here. This is kind of uh, northern Utah, southern Idaho. I think we're actually in the Idaho side right now. We're here with a gentleman who was riding his UTV up along this uh, ridge line uh, a few days ago, a week, a week or so ago. And unfortunately, they rolled off the top, and the Razor rolled 1,200 feet. Three people were not buckled up and they got ejected and they survived and unfortunately the gal that was buckled up, uh, it was too far of a fall for her and she passed away when she hit the bottom. So they've recovered the body and got her out of here. So now basically it's up to us to get the razor out. Nobody's been able to get to this because they've been calling helicopter companies. No helicopters are available because everybody's fighting fires right now. Uh, no record companies would come do it, so we got the call from the sheriff and the Forest Service, who, by the way, the Forest Service up in this area is just awesome. Been great to work with. They understand what we do and the nature of our videos and different things, and uh, they work hand-in-hand -hand with us make sure we get our permits and everything, so big shout-out to the Forest Service. Um, so basically, we have about a three-mile trail from here at the base of the parking lot where we're going to climb. It's probably a at least 2,000 foot climb, if not a little bit more, um, and then we're going to park up on top of the ridge line and start tugging that razor up about 1200 uh just shy of 1200 feet is what we got a winch so it's a long long pull and uh it's gonna be interesting because there's not a lot of room to work up there so anyways we're gonna showcase the capabilities of this beautiful uh cummins wrecker and then uh show you some scenery here so we'll get going Dana 70 and Dana 8 uh, axles. So she is real heavy duty, designed for this type of work. I think we got a 10,000 pound winch on the rear boom, 12,000 pound winch up on the front bumper, uh, PTO driven, uh, hydraulic uh, lift boom there. She's sweet. The reason why this re recovery hasn't been done yet is because they've been waiting to find somebody with the right equipment because this is not a truck trail by any means. Um, it's barely an ATV trail, barely wide enough for some of the big ATVs. And we got a gate here. Now we're gonna have that awkward moment where, where the cameraman gets, where the out, cameraman gets yeah. out because I don't have a parking brake, so. <laughs>
Uh oh. This is uh, pretty tricky with that truck right there. That truck is impressive. sat on my ass and I slid straight down the mountain like I didn't I couldn't see nothing it was pitch black I just followed the razor as it was rolling as right. fast as I could so from that rock kind of where the trunk is at it just I just went straight as I could see and so right now we'll just run one line and then once we start moving it we'll see whether we need a tether line to be able to hook up to it um, it may stay on the hill while we're re-rigging the winch line. It may not, so we'll just see what it does. So let's start rolling cable down there. And then we might as well roll the rope out at the same time since we're going down. There's no tires on the front and both. It's sideways right sideways. now. So it's face, the, the hood of it's facing to the south. Don't fall, Alan. This is deep. I'm just finding more and more pieces as we get farther down. Five hundred, six hundred feet. We're halfway down the mountain. Right now, we're just running all the rope and the cables down the hill. Rope is basically gonna be used as a static line to help us secure the razor once we have to reset the winch line because the winch on the truck only goes out maybe 100 feet or so. Um, so it'll pull in, we'll reset a section of cable, pull in again, somewhere around three, four, 500 feet right here. I think we're just right around the corner from... You want us to pull a little bit more? Pull all the slack you need! They're cutting with that stuff. Um, we're gonna tie on right now, and then you can pull the slack out. All right, let's go. Let's, go. Yep. let's say pull it from the front. Then what do you think? It's got both rear tires, so maybe we could tie onto the front and pull it that way, and the, it'll slide right up. I would think. Do whatever is best. Whatever you think. We'll go ahead and try something, and if it doesn't work, we'll switch it up. Yeah, it's tied onto the front. I like that idea. Big heavy duty swing. Sorry. Alrighty. We are currently hooking up to it. We're rigging it up, and then I'll let you know when it's ready to pull the slack out. Whatever happens, we need to grab that. I think we just go right through the frame, probably, or something like that. Trying to pull it upside down, right? It's right side up right now, and it's got two rear tires. So I think we'd hook to the front, and it would actually slide on its belly pretty good with the rear tires in the back. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Don't, don't let it. Don't hook it in a position where it's going to try to flip. Nope, we won't. We'll just drag it up frontwards. I went straight all through all those trees. Dark, dude. Just but, plowing right well, through it. 
Make sure you get it through the frame. You made it down to here? Yeah, I made it down to here. She was in the back seat right there. And I didn't have my phone or nothing, no lights. So I went around. I remember her phone was in the glove box, which surprisingly was still closed. Got to the glove box and called 911 from here. The other two people were on the top. They'd already called 911, so it transferred me to Logan. And then I was freaked out because you know the whole situation so I went down the mountain the further is there yeah. it was crazy everybody on the way back up stay off to the side of it in case it comes loose do that way instead we're gonna, we're gonna pull it backwards up because you got the wheels the that keep it up off the ground rather than a arms digging in don't pull it all up yet just stop for a second I was buckled in that, and mine's still buckled. Hers was buckled too, so me and her were buckled. I fell out like the third or fourth roll. I would probably stay on the sides or above it. I'd go right over there. We are ready for you to pull all the slack out, and when it's tight, we're ready for you to pull. Let to start pulling. Mostly just slack. Yeah. That uh, was pretty interesting. All the stress built up in the uh, rope and uh, suddenly released like a spring tension and just swung it around. Well, it's coming now. Got all the weight on the line. Uh, we pulled a couple of sections out already. The way we've got this work is we have a bunch of different sections of cable and rope in there. Uh, just because to have 1,200 feet of cable on, on one winch, uh, is not feasible for a truck this size. So we're pulling it up and then hooking it up to some of these dead man's chains that allows us to run the main winch line back out, pull out a section of rope and then keep pulling. So it's, uh, it works really well until we get to the really long sections of cable and rope, which I think we're two now. So that's where we got to start figuring out. We brought these wire grips that basically hook on anywhere on the cable and it'll give you a connection point. The problem is our cable's too big for the ones we brought. So we have to get creative here in a minute, but it's coming. You can see there's some serious weight on the line now. It's gonna go, not like move, it'll go creak, 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 and then whoomp. Creak, 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 whoomp. Well, it looks like the back wheel's rotating. Tell them this. Well, I'll, I'll, let me just get across real quick. Come on now. Let it keep going for a bit. Right. I'm going to try to mount this. As soon as I placed that GoPro, it took off.
Alright, we're gonna run on cable down to you. Looks like something uh, snapped. Not sure. Uh, it went down. We well, I don't know. I think cutting them, you're just gonna make that. I know. Stump. I know. Uh, it's now like broken free through it again. We just make another pull again. Try it again. So. All right. So we're making progress. Unfortunately, uh, the section of rope that we had in there, we think got kind of chafed on a rock or something. It's kind of inevitable. It was just kind of a Hail Mary to see if we could get it to work, and it broke. Luckily, it didn't snap and hit anybody. It just kind of snapped. The machine didn't roll too far. I think we lost maybe 20 feet or so. Um, but I think it's good to get the rope out of there as much as we can because it was getting a lot of flex in it, a lot of uh, stretch. So now, I think we're pretty close to, are we all cable? Well, no, we're not to the razor yet. Do you see the end of the cable? We got another section of cable here. Yeah, I mean, between this and that, I'd rather just go all cable, though. We're gonna grab more cable, drag it where it broke, hook back on the razor, leave this one still tied up, and tie the end where this one broke back up so it's almost doubled how far do you think we are from the top still a thousand feet Jeez. probably we probably only moved a total of 100 150 feet total how are those cowboy boots treating you dude they're like the perfect hiking tool area boots made for every terrain Pull it sideways rather than straight up the hill and can't move it by hand. <laughs> In theory, it should pull it this way forward from there. So Hopefully. Hopefully we got it this way enough. Feels like it's binding up on something. There she goes. Yeah, she breaks loose. She's going to go away. We've been here for a hot minute now, and I think it's moved like 100 feet. Lost another uh, rope. Stuff rubbing on this hillside is just chafing like crazy. So anything that's not just pure cable, just breaking. Pretty sure that was one of our nylon straps or something. So. Is there another cable you want me to send down? Well, let's see how much we need. Let me get the the truck cable all the way out.
Man, we've been pulling for about two hours now and I still don't even see the machine. It's way down there. It was maybe 1,100 feet in a straight line, but we've already run about 1,800 feet of cable, which might be the most we've ever ran. That's a lot. And uh, it's coming its way up. Trees keep on snagging it and breaking stuff. So kind of clearing a path. Then it should just be a nice, clean, straight hill to the top. Uh, we're almost there, actually. At the top. Yeah, I think that's the top right where those guys are. Oh, actually? I think so. I think they're standing on the trail. Oh, the Look up there. That's the trail. That's homeward bound, my friend. I thought that was the false summit. It might be. New cable, man. I'm the cable guy. I'm trying to get rid of the rope so that we can just run cable. So you eliminate your stretch, you eliminate your chance of snapping that rope and hopefully pull up in one long sweep oh, versus well, lots of re-rigging. There's no chance for failure. Yes. Alan, let yes. me see your shoe. That's not good. No. I hear you have duct tape. Yeah. It's gorilla tape. Good as new. Feels weird though. I've been waiting for this moment all day. See the razor cresting that hill right there. We can now see it. It's a big moment. It's a very big moment. Crank it on this bad boy for about seven hours. <laughs> that's, a long, that's the longest I've ever winched on anything continuously. That's a hell of a ride. So I'm the boyfriend of the girl that passed away. Until so Nathan got a hold of you guys and you guys were like, yeah, we'll come help. Other than that, I had no clue how we were gonna get it out. You guys doing all right? For as best we can. Yeah. Yeah. I got ejected out and then I just ran down the mountain and then I, you know, getting there to it and seeing her, she was just yeah, laying there. Yeah. And I was yeah. just in so much shock. I just grabbed her hand and she was already passed away when I got there. Yeah. Is your mind doing all right with going through all that? It's doing okay. I, it's rough to sleep though. Yeah. Pretty much replays every night, you know. Yeah. But one day at a time. Absolutely. We'll make it through it.
Well, that was an interesting day, wasn't it? It, it took was an interesting so day. much longer than we expected, but it was a really, really, really hard recovery. Really steep, uh, you know, way down there. Steep roads to get in there, precarious parking on the top. Not an ideal spot, but it's 8.30, 9 o'clock. We started around noon, so eight or nine hours. Pretty happy about that. I gotta tell you, the group of guys that we had here today between my crew and uh, their, those guys, phew, that is one solid group of guys. Like, normally when people try to help us with recoveries, we're a little reluctant because it's like, eh, are you gonna get in the way or are you actually gonna help? This crew was running circles around us, like good solid group of friends uh, our guy here has. And you know, he needs them at a time like this. So I think it was really good to bring a little closure to uh, the daughter of the woman who passed away. Uh, she was there, she watched it come up over the hill and it was like raining and sunset and just a really, really cool moment. And uh, you know, I saw her uh, crying for a minute there, kind of hugging a friend and you know, I think that was, it's, it's, it's a cool thing for us. Like that pays the whole thing for me. Like that's, that's what makes it worth it. Um, so now we're waiting for the friend's trailer to roll up. We're gonna winch it onto the trailer and then get out of here. Unfortunately, he did not have insurance. He was between policies on this deal. So that's why it was so hard uh, to get anybody up here. And also, you know, there's no budget for this. So we just threw it in and helped him out uh, because of you guys. You guys, anytime you see this stuff pop up, you reach out to us, send us an email. A friend of a friend calls us and you know, sometimes like this, we're able to get involved and, and help solve problems. So pretty stoked on that. Huge shout out to the Forest Service for constantly being willing to work with us. Uh, you know, when stuff like this happens, you gotta move fast. And so that's not typically the pace of the federal government, but the Forest Service has done an incredible job pushing stuff through, getting us the permits and giving us, you know, the green light to come in here rather than us coming in here doing a recovery and then having to deal with, you know, complaints and stuff afterwards. It's so much easier to just go in and have everything kosher, all your permits ready to go. And this goes for everybody. I used to be the guy that would just run and gun, go places without permits. The headache that it causes you is 10 times worse than the simple permit process. So I'm not saying this because I'm trying to be buddy buddy with the government. I'm saying it because I learned the hard way and that's kind of the way that it works. So again, huge shout out to Forest Service for making this process easy and for helping us out. Huge shout out to Brian from Atlas Towing. Uh, my friend who came up here, helped us with the recovery. Uh, very, very, very experienced rec master. He knows exactly what he's doing. Uh, we took his uh, old Cummins here, which performed flawlessly. I'm taking that truck home no matter what. And uh, also shout out to Yankum Ropes. Yankum, uh, we used a bunch of their ropes and straps and stuff and soft shackles uh, up and down the hill. And again, zero failures, went perfectly. So yeah, overall successful day. Now we gotta get this thing loaded and get out of here. So thank you for joining us.